Hello animation students, today we're going to be animating some fire. Uh, I'm going to be animating this in Adobe Animate, um, but you can do most of this stuff uh, in any animation software as long as it does keyframes and onion skinning and allow you to create new frames, you're good to go. So this is the setup I'm going to be using, 1920 by 1080 frame rate 24 frames a second, fairly standard stuff for me. I'm going to click create and I'm going to change the zoom to fit in window just so if I happen to move stuff around I don't have to keep zooming in and out to get the whole picture. So this is just one way to animate a looping small kind of fireplace size fire. And the way I'm going to set it up, uh, I'm going to demonstrate in a second. Um, it's my own kind of method I've worked out over the years. Um, I've had lots of varying influences, uh, such as the effects animator Alex Redfish, who's very good, uh, and a number of different animators on Twitter and social media and everything. So it's always good to supplement your own research with others' art and everything and real life reference. If we look at some reference for fire that I'm going to use, um, it doesn't actually quite match how I will be animating it in here. Um, it's something that has just kind of settled to how I do it in this particular way. It's a handy way to get some nice looping fire for some background animation or some effects animation or something. Okay, so let's get started. The first thing we're going to do is going to rename this layer we have here. I'm going to call this Guides. I'm going to press B for brush. I'm just going to change this to a, maybe a grey. What I want to do, I'm going to hold shift as I draw this line. Um, but anyway, you can get a straight line is fine. I'm going to draw it kind of uh, in the lower third of this canvas. I'm just going to draw a straight line. And then either side, I'm going to do two lines going up like this. Then I'm going to draw a line at the top, something like that. Um, yeah, I think that's that's good to go. Uh, basically what this is, we're not going to animate anything underneath this section here. And we're going to use the lines either side of here to kind of dictate where we're going to have the fire kind of rise up from. So for instance, it doesn't matter if a uh, fire kind of spills out onto these edges over here. But we want the fire to go kind of no higher than this top line, uh, in the sense that if the fire kind of gets to this point, then uh, it'll kind of break away into its own little uh, section. You can kind of construct these particular guides uh, how you want. Um, usually mine ends up being this kind of square shape, but you can kind of change it to um, something thinner or something shorter and fatter. Um, it just kind of depends on what you want, but I say just jump straight in, give it a go, and you can always redo this idea and change it up. So these, this is my base guide. I'm going to make a new layer. I'm going to call this circles. Uh, actually, I'm going to call that circle guides. Sorry. I'm just going to pick a different color. I'm just going to pick uh, maybe light blue. And so what we're going to do, we're going to use circles to help construct the shape of our fire. Kind of like bubbles, almost. And what I'm going to draw now is the path that these bubbles are going to take. So the paths are going to be the main mass of the fire which we're going to draw around. So these are going to be for reference. Uh, I'm going to do maybe five bubble paths. So I'm going to do the main middle one. So they can kind of be sort of swirly, uh, a little bit kind of wavy like that. Um, fire kind of uh, when it kind of burns upwards, there's lots of convection currents that kind of swirl in and around themselves as it goes up. And this is something we're going to try and replicate uh, with these bubbles, um, the kind of the ebb and flow, the, the waviness of the fire as it kind of goes up. So I'm going to draw a couple of others, maybe I'll alternate the uh, kind of wavelength, uh, I'll do some more that are kind of a little bit longer. Asymmetry is kind of the key to effects animation. Uh, Symmetry uh, kind of makes it look less organic. Um, so I think keep things unequal, odd, uneven sort of thing. So maybe you can have it sort of fast and slow at the top. All will be explained in a second as we start animating the reference and stuff. Uh, but keeping everything looking different is key, I think. So we've got five bubble paths here. And these are going to be the reference paths that these bubbles are going to take. So I'm just going to lock both these guide layers. I'm going to make a new layer, and I'm going to call that 
bubbles. And I'm going to change the color again. So I'll maybe change that to a, a green just so it's different. So we're going to do maybe a second's worth of animation. So it'd be quite a long, long loop, but um, we'll kind of, you know, break it down as we go and it'll all be um, all looking nice and sharp. Uh, so the actual bubble, I'm going to draw underneath this bottom line. I'm just going to change that color to something less dull. So I'm going to draw the circle maybe about hmm, something like this, just kind of loosely. Uh, I'm going to press uh, F6, which is my keyboard shortcut for insert blank keyframe. Um, you can set this up by going to uh, edit. No, file, keyboard shortcuts, animate keyboard shortcuts if you're a Mac, and it's file, or I think it's edit keyboard shortcuts if you're on a PC. Uh, and you can just type in um, blank keyframe here, and you can change the shortcut um, to there. I'm going to turn my onion skin on. So what we want to do, we want this circle to rise up this path here. So we're going to animate it rising up this line, and we're going to have it kind of loop over. So the next one I'm going to do. Basically what we want, we want the center of this bubble to kind of follow along this path we've drawn. So this next one, um, I'm going to draw another bubble going up. If you wanted to, you could also just duplicate this keyframe, just drag that along, and you can also um, kind of just move the same stroke work up, however you want to do it. I tend to redraw it, but you can also just move the stroke work up. The only way, um, the only thing I don't like about this is it kind of doesn't include the uh, bottom layers as you make a new one. So I tend to just uh, insert frame on uh, those bottom layers, just so it kind of extends that out just there. Uh, so you can do it this way if you wish. Um, you can just copy the keyframe and just move it up here as well. Because these are just for reference. We're not actually going to end up using these. So we want the center of these bubbles to kind of follow these paths we've drawn. Uh, so we're going to make the part, the bubble reach the top of the path, past the top of this line we've drawn, and then that'll be it. That's its journey done. Uh, let me just move that back there. Just going to remove that frame. Uh, so what we've got so far is just one bubble path going to the top there, just following that path loosely. And we're going to do the same to the other paths, um, but we'll sh change up the shape and size of the bubbles as well. Um, so I'll do I'll do these on the same layer, but you can do these in separate layers if you want to kind of if you want to change things afterwards. Um, so I'm going to draw my next bubble again, thinking about asymmetry. Want to keep it all looking textured and unusual and uh, organic. So I'm going to draw another. Uh, bubble, maybe a bigger bubble perhaps. Um, we can change the size of the bubbles as they go up as well. So this one starts here. So offsetting all the timings of these bubbles is key to what's going to make this animation look nice as well. So I'm going to start this second bubble on this path over here and the, it's going to start on frame three. So I'm just going to turn my onion skin back on. Uh, you can always alternate how quickly um, these bubbles rise as well. So they can go quickly and fast. They can like change throughout the animation. So don't worry too much. Uh, we're just kind of still subtly trying to think of where the center of this point is and how closely it links up to this path we've added there. Um, so a new blank keyframe. So these uh, are all going to form the, the kind of the, the base of this fire. So we've got two bubbles now going up. Um, I'm going to turn my onion skin off just so I can see that a little bit more. Uh, so I'm going to do another bubble on this frame, so frame 6, and I'm going to start that over here. Uh, I'll probably start it like that, maybe I'll change the size as I go up. So we've given ourselves a second of animation. This is where I've added the frames uh, on the guides underneath. So we don't want to go over a second. So we'll have to keep an eye and make sure we don't loop ourselves past this. But we'll, we'll keep an eye on that as we go, go along. So I've drawn our next bubble here, turn my onion skin back on. So again, just subtly trying to keep the center of these bubbles following the paths we've drawn. But again, don't worry if it kind of all changes as you go along. Uh, it's all a learning experience, you know, try things out, make mistakes, do it again. It's part of the animation process. 
So now we've got three bubbles. So I'm going to do another bubble here, I think. So I'm going to start maybe a smaller one. Okay, so we're approaching uh, this limit here. So I'm one frame away from reaching a second. Um, so if I press my last keyframe, so this is going to be the last frame of this particular uh, bubble. So we've got four at the moment. So I'm going to start... Hmm. I might add a bubble here actually, like a small one. So I've gone back a bit and I'm just going to animate that going up. So I might make this a kind of quick one, just to kind of fill in the gaps. We don't want too many big gaps left in this kind of body of fire at any point. So I think that uh, will make it kind of tricky to um, kind of make look good, so to speak. Um, but I am going to go to here and I'm going to do another one on that same path. So this one I'm picking. I'm going to have this kind of be a fairly big one. So I'm just going to animate that going up. So how fast these bubbles take to go up is something I guess that will be left up to you. Okay, so I'm on my last frame of uh, where I want my loop to end. Uh, and I haven't finished making my bubble go up just yet. So I need to go back to the start. Uh, something I can do is stretch out my onion skin so I can see the end, but obviously that looks like a bit of a mess. So maybe this is uh, a reason you might want to keep all the bubbles on separate layers, perhaps. Um, but one other way uh, I tend to just quickly make sure that it loops over nicely is just to make um, a temporary loop layer. So I'll call it temp loop. I'm just going to click my last frame on my actual bubbles layer. I'm going to press Option or Alt and drag a copy of that frame on this layer underneath. And we can see, so if I turn that on and off, that's uh, a duplicate of the last frame on my current layer. So if I click my bubbles layer again, I'll know I can just draw there. And I'll just turn that off again. So if I compare that last frame to the first frame, we see that loops over quite nicely. So I'm just going to continue drawing that going up. And we just have to do that for every time we want the, the loop to end. So I can just delete that frame on the uh, temporary loop layer. So if I go to control and loop playback, and just play this at the moment, uh, this is currently how it's looking. So there's a big couple of gaps left still. Um, so we just need to spend some time adding some more bubbles, changing up the spacing of which path to pick. So for instance, uh, this, the big spacing kind of starts about here, so I might add in another bubble on this one. So it's just a matter of going through and just making sure there's no big gaps left in the, in the spacing. Sometimes I like to just eyeball it, so I'll just go to the last frame, quickly switch to the, the front frame there, and then just, just eyeball it. And just keep checking back and forth. Sometimes I find onion skinning it can be a bit detrimental to my kind of flow of the actual animation, so I kind of like to just do it old school and just go back and forth between frames and just do it by eye. Uh, so again, we're starting the bubbles underneath this bottom line here, and we're making them disappear once they get past this top line here. Don't worry if the bubbles go over these sections here, that's fine, but as long as they don't go over too much, but as long as they start on this bottom section. So again, I'm just going to eyeball it. I can see that this one is there. I'm just going to quickly switch to the front frame and then just compare them. That's fine. Okay, we're nearly there. Sometimes if the bubbles kind of meet up a little bit, I can always uh, just kind of undo what we do if it's not gonna if it's not gonna work. So I might just remove that one. So let's have a little playback of that. Okay, it doesn't seem to be any big gaps missing at the moment. Um, so we'll work with this, and I think this will be fine. So this is our base reference. This is what we're going to use to kind of build our fire. So we've got bubbles first, and we're going to turn bubbles into fire. So 
I'm going to hide my circles path layer. I'm going to right click my guides and just change the transparency to about kind of halfway. And I'll do the same with my bubbles layer. So I might actually make the transparency about 80% 80, 80 transparent. So I can see them, but they're not too intrusive. I'm just going to remove my temp layer as well, because I don't need that. And I'm going to make sure these are all locked. And I'm going to make a new layer and call it Rough Pass 1. So I'm going to change my color here to perhaps red, just so it's nice and bright so I can see. So this is where the fun can start to happen, finally. Um, so, my kind of own stipulations for this exercise is we start our drawing from this bottom layer here. Um, the base of the fire is always these two corners. Uh, any bubbles or circles that um, enter above this top line here will break away from the main body of fire down here. So I might just make some little notes just so you can kind of see these as we're working. So, so start here. Uh, always anchor the base of the fire drawing uh, here and then break away up here. Hopefully these should make sense. I'm just going to rename that layer because we always name our layers. Um, notes. I'm going to change the opacity and um, so we can see it but again it's not too intrusive i might just change the color of that all as well to maybe just a blue i'm gonna lock that so it's back to rough pass one back to red b for brush so another thing as well um as we draw uh, something that kind of i find makes fire look uh, interesting and kind of ferocious and stylized is uh, combining arcs with sharp corners, um, straights and curves, you know, it's kind of a classic kind of drawing thing. We can kind of have these sort of shapes uh, going on, um, all kind of manner of things, but hopefully you'll pick it up as we start drawing. So we'll start at the top. Um, I try to make the tops of any bubbles kind of pointy like this to give it that classic fiery look. Um, we're going to give each circle a, like a tiny bit of a buffer, like we're going to give it this imaginary each circle like a little bit of a buffer so we can draw around them and then that way any circles that kind of intersect we can just uh, kind of combine them into into one thing and if there's any kind of large gaps um, like around here we can kind of work with those as well so I'll start and then you can kind of get the idea as we go along so I'm gonna start up here I'm going to introduce like a little cut around here we're gonna go all the way around underneath so one of my stipulations is always anchor to these bottom points here around here so I'm gonna kind of aim to include this little this little circle here but I can see that this circle is gonna start coming up soon so I'm gonna kind of give that a little bit of a buffer as well and then always anchor I'm gonna draw this back to over here and then I'm just gonna do the same this side as well so kind of go around uh, I might introduce like a little bit of a sharp corner here and go around and again give it a nice little sharp bit up there I'm gonna go underneath so again it doesn't matter if our line comes over over this side here that's fine but as long as we anchor it back to this bit here um, might introduce another sharp bit there go underneath so keeping it a buffer and then back to that corner. So that's our first frame. This may change as we get to the end of the animation, um, but this is a starting point we can work from and we can amend this as we go. So next frame, F6 for new blank keyframe. I might put my onion skin on as well so we can see. Uh, so I can keep going back and forward. So I can see all these circles are moving up in this next frame. So I'm gonna consider that when we animate. 
So fire can be sort of erratic, so don't worry if it uh, changes a little bit. So for instance, you can see this bit here in my last frame, it's kind of moved over here, um, but that's fine. So I'm just gonna do the same thing, gonna draw underneath. I can see this one is starting to come up now, so I'll give that more of a buffer there, and that can go back to the base. So just using our circle references to help us construct this fire. So this one is nearly going to be above this line soon, so I have to bear that in mind. So as these shapes kind of start uh, overlapping and creating new kind of edges, uh, that's good because we kind of want all these all these different things going on. So we can see this one's going to start coming up soon, so I'm just going to consider that in this drawing. Uh, don't be afraid to add in kind of curves as well. So I'm kind of anticipating this uh, this circle is going to kind of push out in this direction. So kind of just giving that a little bit of a breather space there. So this one in this particular frame has entered above this. So I'm going to break away uh, this big chunk here into its own kind of little fireball. So I'm going to introduce some little kind of cuts and nooks into that bit. So don't worry if uh, if your bubble kind of uh, crosses over this little section here. Just kind of work with it, you know, just kind of treat this as like that convection current. So as it goes up, it's going to kind of swirl around like this. Um, I might introduce just a slight gap here. So because there's like a big absence of space coming here, I might just introduce this and then we can kind of follow this little gap going up in the next few frames. So any sections that kind of break away from the main bulk of fire, uh, these can kind of just gradually get smaller as the fire progresses and the animation progresses. And this will give this a kind of a nice kind of ember look to it and it gives these little kind of cinders that kind of just slowly burn away. So we're going to still have this section rising up, uh, but we're going to have it just gradually get smaller and we can even break it into its own little bits as it goes up as well. Sometimes as well, I like to kind of break my own rules. Um, this section here just feels like it's just barely clinging on to this main mass of fire, so I might just kind of cut that off in the main section as well. Even though it's not above this main line, I just think it'll look better. So I'm just going to break that away here as well. And now we've got this kind of new shape kind of rising here. So again, curves with sharp corners and everything. So this little gap here, which I introduced there, I'm just gonna kind of, again, treat it like there's this imaginary buffer going around all the uh, edges of the circles here. And then that's gonna rise up with the animation. So this section we broke off last time, I might just kind of have it, kind of have this kind of action. So it's gonna sort of, rotate around on itself and get smaller so I might kind of think about that shape as it's going and kind of just give it a little rotation as it shrinks so it's kind of just slowly starting to rotate a bit give it that kind of convection and uh, maybe a similar sort of thing with here I might just kind of make that smaller as well so you can see this bubble behind is broken off so it's just slightly touching the thing so I may again just break my own rules and kind of just keep that part of the main mass uh, just for now uh, and again this one just feels like it's barely hanging on so I might just break that one off as well yeah rules are made to be broken is what they always say apart from you know things like don't drink poison and things like that they're pretty good rules to follow again just keeping this little bit here I might even break these two apart and then they'll still be kind of rising up like that. I can do the same here. Not that broken away. Curves and straights. I think that's a good way to kind of think about fire. You'll kind of get used to it. I end up I do it so much now that I kind of 
uh, end up doing almost the same shapes all the time. They always end up looking like a batarang or something. Uh, so this uh, section here that's broken off into this one because it's gone above that bit now. So still paying attention to the bubbles underneath. So this bit, I'm going to break this down even more. So we can look at that. There we go. Don't be afraid to change the shapes as it goes up. Fire is erratic after all. So remember the, the the reference stuff we've used underneath, you know, it's, it's all just guides. You can change it up as you need to. I think I might introduce a little bit more of a gap in the previous frame just here because I feel like that's a bit of an absent space as well. Just kind of break up that shape a tiny bit. So these are just going to get smaller and smaller as we go up. Maybe and sometimes what I like to do is kind of pull a shape. So if I've got this shape here, I like to kind of uh, pull it up from the top like that. So it kind of ends up doing this kind of thing, just to kind of give it that uh, that sort of rising, rising fire type idea. So I might do that with this as well. It's kind of shrinking that shape down. So this particular bubble you can see in the background, this green one, uh, is kind of is here in this next one, and um, that kind of I don't know, it's throwing off what I'm currently working on. So I might just use the, uh, the onion skin previous layer instead of using this reference, uh, just for this particular instance. That's a big bit of fire going there. So I may. It's gonna more like that. So these gaps, I might combine these gaps now that they've kind of hit each other. So we've got this nice kind of shape going up here. So these are getting smaller and smaller. You have to be careful uh, not to make bits kind of look too small because it could just turn into noise that doesn't really do anything so it's always worth keeping an eye on. I'm going to break these two parts a bit uh, here so this is one part but now it's two. So fire kind of loses its integrity after a while once it burns out all its energy so <laughs> something to consider. Uh, so the background uh, circle for that bit there kind of has gone away past um, the actual thing I was using for reference. Uh, so I'm going to break that apart now, I think, and just I'm going to have that go up afterwards. So now the new shape is kind of a bit like this. Still that gap going there. We might do uh, another one just here. So we're about halfway. So any small bits that are practically dots, I'm just going to ignore now. Um, and I can always come back to them later if I want to give like some proper little embers rising up, but we'll do that later. So those bits have just kind of turned into the kind of sharp shard type things. And then we've got this thing rising up. So I don't want stuff to be kind of too close to edges like this, like this is probably like the limit I think before it kind of breaks away. Maybe we could break it away as well, who knows. And like I said earlier, don't be afraid to kind of change the shape throughout as well uh, if you think it will make it look a little bit more fiery, a little bit more interesting. So just a couple of little dots there, I might just get rid of those two now. Oh, maybe that one. So, just always pushing the shape and changing it and making it smaller. Always introducing little sharp cuts and corners. Kind of keep it looking ferocious. So this gap I've got here, I might, in the next frame, I'll just kind of cut that connection and just have it as a, as a new section. 
So make that one, and just that one, they'll be the last embers, I think. Uh, so this one's rising up, kind of pinching that. I'm going to break these apart now as well. So this little bad boy here is kind of still just kind of keeping connected. So I'm going to kind of break that away now. But I don't want to kind of break it too much because I don't want the whole volume to kind of fall apart. So it's kind of doing this. So these are going to be the new embers because they've broken apart from this top line. And this little bit is just kind of hanging on. It's getting there. So this section has broken away now, so I'm just going to give that its own little ember. Uh, this section is close to breaking off as well. I may even break this off in the next bit. So I'm going to break this section off now. So now I've got a new shape the base of the fire. Might introduce a new little gap there. So this one, I'm just going to kind of pinch all the kind of shapes around while trying to get it looking smaller. So I might like and pinch this section here and like have the whole shape kind of follow, follow that. Uh, I might break away this section even though it hasn't reached our top bit yet. Uh, I might break it away like a little bit earlier. Now I can just kind of give these little this little bridge its own section. So again, just kind of pinching this little section up from this side, just kind of give it a little bit of uh, texture. Might give this like a little little rotation treatment from earlier as well. And you'll find there was it. You'll find who's the tree painting man? I always forget. Bob Ross. Is he the one who always said like happy accidents and stuff? I think that applies to animation as well. I might even just introduce a gap into this thing here because I think it's a bit too big. Uh, yeah, I think happy accidents is a very uh, animation friendly term as well, especially when you're animating straight ahead like this. Um, you'll find there'll suddenly be things that you're like, ah, oh, okay, that kind of works. Um, I think iteration is the name of name of that. <clears throat> I think iteration is kind of key to a lot of animation uh, techniques. Okay, so it's still gonna break that up now. Still pinching that around. So sharp corners with curvy straights and everything. Always the key for fire, I think. Breaking these two apart now. Don't be afraid to kind of pinch down the shape of uh, embers as well, to kind of give them these like kind of flowery kind of shapes. So nearly about to loop over. Might break this part away now because that's uh, just good belly hanging on. So we're on our last frame, and it'll be interesting to see how this kind of compares to our first initial frame. So we might need to change uh, some things. So that kind of loops over. Might just break that little bit off there. Okay, so we've reached the end. Uh, let's kind of just loop this over. I'm just kind of curious to see how it loops at the moment. Okay, so you can kind of see where the loop is. Kind of doesn't quite match up at the moment. So if we go to here, then to here, 
So we can see there's some bits that need um, kind of shaping up a little bit. So for the, long, for the most part, the shape is actually kind of crosses over quite well, but it's these little bits obviously which we didn't anticipate we'd have at the start uh, that we'll need to add in. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to uh, unhide, actually no, I'm going to make a new uh, temp layer, temporary. So I'm going to copy this, so I'm going to, this is just another way you can do it, copy frames, and I'm just going to paste frames uh, onto this layer, so you can see um, that's our previous one. I might just change the colour just so we can see that a little clearly. So I might change that to uh, uh, bright green and just lock it for a moment and go back to our main layer. Change my colour back to red that was drawing in. Uh, so I might just turn my onion skin off, which it already is. So we can see this green is the last layer of the current, uh, last frame, sorry, the current layer. So I'm just going to kind of just try and trace that as well and then just remember to put in all these other bits uh, so obviously there was a gap in this uh, last time which we didn't anticipate we'd have this time so I'm just going to introduce that so I'm just going to hide that temp layer so now we've got the uh, these added bits um, from the end of the loop which we can then start kind of animating in so these will be new as well so we just have to go through and just make sure that these added bits um, are there as well. So I'm just gonna just go through and just treat these like I've been treating all the other stuff. Okay, just breaking everything up. Okay, so let's give that a little uh, playthrough. So not bad. I think uh, this is a definitely a good starting point, I think. Um, so there's a couple of little wobbly bits um, like if we pay attention to kind of this section here as it goes up, kind of looks a little bit kind of shaky, but uh, I think it's fine for our starting position. Um, I might even just kind of just combine those for this particular frame. I don't think it quite works. Um, maybe I could just do a tiny gap to signify that something's about to change in the next one. Okay, I think that's kind of sorted out what I, my concerns were. Um, I can't see anything majorly weird, maybe apart from like the baseline, if we pay attention to that as we watch, we can see that's like kind of a little bit squiggly. Uh, but for the sake of, you know, getting this video done, so we're not going to take hours and hours, um, let's get um, the bottom bit kind of sheared off. So I'm going to hide all the other kind of base layers apart from the bottom guides. Uh, and what I'm going to do, I'm just going to hold shift um, as I draw on my rough pass layer and just connect up the bottom uh, edges of all these lines. So I'm just going to kind of use my um, guide there as reference for where I'm drawing. So if I have any gaps, um, I'm just going to kind of make sure I don't draw those in. Just making sure to kind of connect up uh, all the lines so we can uh, fill this in nicely. So if I just hide my guides layer and play this, uh, the, the baseline kind of jumps around a bit but that's something that can be sorted out. Um, but this is the main shape of our fire. Um, it's uh, yeah, it's you know a good base for building sort of looping 2D fires and you can change the the guides to be longer or shorter um, but I think this is a good way to start learning how to do fire and understanding the shape and sort of flow of fire and everything and I think you can get some really decent looking stuff going on so what I'm going to do, I'm going to press K for paint bucket um, and I'm just going to fill in uh, all the gaps here um, of any closed edges uh, if you click on something and you find it doesn't fill in um, you can change the gap options underneath your paint bucket here to go to like close small gaps, um, that always works because uh, Adobe Animate is a vector program. Um, so any of the tiniest gaps uh, in the line work means it won't fill in uh, that shape. So for instance here, like it could be something absolutely tiny that I can't even see. So is it here? No, it's not that. Uh, where could it be? Here, 
that's all it takes. Just this tiny little gap. So if I click, it's not going to do it, but I've changed the gap options. That will kind of fill that in, um, or you can just kind of go in and just fill that little gap in as well yourself manually, just so you get some nice clean edges. So I'm just going to go through and just fill in all these. So at the moment, it doesn't, it doesn't matter what color you fill in all this in with. Um, like you'd think that we want this to be a fiery color, um, but we're gonna focus on that um, shortly. So I'm just gonna fill in some of the gaps here. Um, so as long as we have a block color for this at the moment, I'll show you. We're gonna do a nice gradient using Animate's gradient tools. Uh, so if you're using something other than great, um, if you're using something other than Animate to, uh, animate this in then you might not be able to follow along exactly but if there's a way to kind of add a gradient or um, use masking in the software you're using um, that'd be kind of handy let's change my gap option there rather than trying to find the hole and there we are so this is the main base this is like the fire we've got uh, the next little bit we're going to do is add in the yellowy sections. So, you know, a classic cartoon fire. Uh, I guess you'd have um, kind of that shape. And then in the middle, you've got your, your kind of either, I'm not sure if it's the hotter section um, or the cooler section. Can't remember which around it is. Whiter is hotter. So I guess it's hotter. I don't know. Uh, but we're going to add in this yellow section um, to our animation now so we're going to want to work on a new layer so this is maybe we could rename this to rough pass red and then we we'll make a new layer above and call it um, rough pass yellow so I'm just going to lock the rough pass red layer so I'm going to select again just another block color so I'll use yellow um, but we're going to use these base block colors to add in a gradient um, shortly uh, so the thing to do is to use the same uh, kind of philosophy um, we've used uh, you know, design philosophy um, for the main bulk of the fire, and just kind of use sharps, sharp edges, and curvy lines to kind of create this kind of inner hotter section of the fire. Um, so kind of um, giving it the same kind of space. So this is a gap here underneath. So I'm just going to make sure um, that I kind of go around that so we can see it. So you can kind of go to the base if you want. Um, or you can kind of treat the base of the fire as a section to kind of avoid as well. So we want to kind of go in quite away from the edge um, to kind of give it. So I don't think I'd bother giving this little section, that little section, um, any yellow in it because I don't think it's big enough. Um, but we can go through and just do the same sort of thing. So you can put on onion skin if you want as well, so you can kind of keep track. But um, we can kind of make this a little bit more erratic if you want, so you can break shapes uh, away um, easier. So, you know, this one has kind of closed back up again, that shape, so... Kind of just using the uh, the shape underneath to kind of inform... Um, the shape of this yellow one. So I think by rule I wouldn't give um, many of the breakaway sections uh, any hotter yellow segments, because I think they're kind of, they've lost their energy already, because they're breaking away from the main bulk, so... I'd keep the main section of the fire, the focus of where we're adding uh, change the gap options there, um, this kind of hotter yellower fire, so I might just actually disconnect it uh, from the actual base like that so again this can be a little bit kind of more freeform, kind of change this up as you wish because I think this is uh, what will make the fire look kind of ferocious and erratic I think, so again just adding blank keyframes into these. Also, if you have any questions about these videos, like as you're trying to follow along perhaps, um, feel free just to comment below and just say like, oh, this isn't working, have you got any advice on this? And I'll try and, you know, respond as soon as I can, uh, among everything else uh, that I do. But, you know, this is kind of what I enjoy doing, so I'll, I'll try and respond uh, as quickly as I can, um, so you can kind of be getting on with your animation experiments. If you want further animation people to follow, like to, to tutorial channels and things, uh, check out um, 
my channel suggestions. There's lots of um, other people on there who uh, are very good at animating and anim tutoring as well. Like their videos are very easy to follow. Um, so have a look at those to kind of supplement your learning and research. So don't be afraid to have uh, lots of different um, hotter inner sections in this fire as well. So kind of changing up these shapes quite a bit, but as long as we keep the same idea that we're keeping away from the edge, I think it'll look fine. So I feel like I, I'm kind of uh, being a little bit sloppy with this, but um, I think for the purposes of learning I think we'll still be able to get the main point across but I think sometimes that kind of works in its favor like uh, this kind of quick kind of sharp sharp and curved like, approach kind of gives it a nice erratic look okay, nearly the end of this bit okay last frame so we might need to do the same thing we did last time and uh, just kind of compare the previous um, compare the last frame to the first frame. So if I kind of do this, I think we've probably got away with that actually. Let me turn the underskin off and just play that back. So there's a section there somewhere in the middle where it's kind of fluctuating, so I might just try and fix that. Uh, let's go through. I think it's around here, it's going a little bit kind of a little bit too erratic for my taste. So I might just kind of try to neaten it up a tiny bit. Just kind of connect that up so it doesn't sort of keep breaking away. Though hmm, might be too just edit that a tiny bit. Because obviously you want the animations to still read well. We don't want it to kind of look a bit too erratic uh, not necessarily erratic but we won't be able to pass that movement in our head we want it to make sense we want it to be able to read well in our minds so we're not going what was that so for instance this bit kind of just sort of pops out of nowhere so i might kind of start feeding that in in this frame so if i read play that back i think that kind of um reads a tiny bit better i think that's fine for now actually um so what I'm going to do, I'm just going to make a new folder. So you might not be able to do this uh, in the software you're using, but I'm just going to call this um, roughs and stuff we don't need anymore. I'm just going to unlock them all, but I'm going to press shift and select them all and just move them into this folder and hide it. And I'm going to lock it and hide it. Um, so now we have just the two layers um, available. So we've got our main fire layer, the red, and the kind of inner hotter layer, which is uh, yellow. Uh, there's some stuff I'd probably sort out on the yellow layer that's just kind of not reading quite well. Um, but we'll uh, maybe I'll come back to this another time. But I think uh, for the purposes of this tutorial, uh, it's okay. Maybe that means my standards are low. I don't know. Um, I should sort it out really, but uh, I don't have that much available time to be able to come back to this. So I'm using what free time I have right now to kind of show you this. So the next bit we're going to do is add. Uh, a couple of little effects that Animate has. So you might not be able to follow along to this if you're using different software, um, but we'll just kind of see how we go on. Might just do this sort of stuff in After Effects instead, if you have availability to that. Uh, but if you have the uh, opportunity to do masking and kind of gradients and glows in your software, then you might be able to follow along to this in some capacity. So I'm just going to hide Rough Pass Yellow just for now. So we've got our main uh, fire bulk here. So. For adding a gradient and masks and everything, what we're going to do is we're going to go to our rectangle tool and we are going to make a new layer. We're going to call this uh, Fire Gradient 1. And we're going to draw a square that kind of covers the main area of our fire just here. So we want a gradient on this. So I'm going to go to the fill color on the right hand side here and I'm just going to click on a generic gradient here, so black and white, although I need to select it first. There we go. So I'm just pressed V and selecting the color and it's going to black and white. Uh, next, we want to go to our color uh, properties that are just over here. If we don't have this, you can go to window and 
color and that will show up here and this uh, little bar here is where we have the gradient color so if I double click the little white box here this will allow me to change this to something like um, an orange and if I double click the black here this will allow me, to allow me to change it to something like a red um, so you can also um, click in the little color wheel here when you double click to change something to that's a bit more um, specific if you want to add a third color or any more colors in here you can also just click in along this bar and that'll add in a different one so maybe you want to add in maybe just a tiny bit of uh, yellow just before going to red here um, but I might kind of just lessen that a tiny bit so I'm not quite sure that's what I want um, so now we want to have this rotating uh, a different way because I don't want it going left to right I want it going up to down so to find the gradient rotate tool which is a, a weird thing to have anyway by itself um, it's not where you think it would be like it's not under the paint bucket or the rectangle actually under the free transform tool if you press Q to get that uh, that up um, this is where the gradient transform tool is which is the uh, shortcut is F so you can press that so if we click the gradient we've made we can see now there's two extra options so there's an opportunity to kind of squash in the gradient parameters we've made so you can kind of see what difference that has so we're kind of changing that, uh, that gradient there's this little circle up here I want which is where you rotate the gradient and again we can kind of change where the actual gradient lies on this so there's quite um, quite a number of things you can do with the gradient once you've got that up so now I want this color to be applied to our animation underneath so what we want we want to mask off the gradient with our animation so what I'm going to do I'm going to drag our rough animation above the gradient I'm going to right click our animation layer and go to mask and what that's done, uh, as long as both these layers remain locked and visible, uh, Animate will put the fire gradient color underneath the animation. So now, if we play this, we have this uh, this gradient um, playing with our animation. Um, so what I might do is just, I'm going to unlock both of them again. I'm just going to alter the gradient slightly. So I'm going to press um, F for the gradient tool. Just click the fire gradient layer here and just click on my timeline and I'm just going to just pull down this gradient a little bit so I want the top of the fire to be the uh, like the reddest uh, so to speak so if I lock both those again that mask uh, effect still applies so now you can see like it's uh, kind of red at the top and kind of hotter in the middle uh, you can change that gradient to like a radial one as well when you uh, set that up initially so I might just do the same thing um, for this as well so I'm just going to hide both the red um, and its mask layer there. Leave just the, the yellow one, which kind of looks kind of funny by itself. And I'm just going to do the same thing. I'm going to make a new layer and I'm going to call this um, Fire Gradient 2. And I'm going to draw, I'm just going to lock the yellow layer there. I'm just going to draw another gradient. So I'm just going to change this. I'm going to press V for selection to select it. Just double click. Um, oh, sorry. Yeah, go to the color. Sorry. Uh, and I'm going to make this a little bit hotter, so I might change that to white and maybe change that to like a fiery uh, kind of thing there. I might change this to a radial one as well. Let's see how that looks. Might not work. If you want um, to delete one, just kind of select it and uh, drag it down. So I might use this as my uh, gradient for this one. So again, I'm going to drag the animation above the gradient, right click and go mask, and then we've got this thing playing. So now if I unhide all of those, uh, we have this kind of animation going. So uh, I'm not too sold on that gradient actually, so I might change that back to uh, a linear. Press F for the transform gradient. Just lock those again. Okay, I think that looks a little bit better. I might just lower the opacity of the animation. Hopefully that should work. Hmm, let's try. 
try this one as well. So right click. Okay, yeah, that's fine. Uh, I think that looks, that looks a little nicer. Um, one other thing you can do as well um, is you can change the background to maybe something like a, a dark blue or like a darker color. And you can add a glow effect. It's a little bit tricky because you can't use it with the mask. So what I'm going to do, I'm actually just going to make a duplicate of the uh, original main mass uh, color there. I'm just going to click that and drag it onto the new layer icon here to make a copy. I'm just going to rename it Glow. I'm going to right click it and turn the mask off and I'm going to put it underneath everything. And I am going to click on my first frame here. I'm going to go over to Filters, which is here. Uh, you can see uh, it'll be under Properties. And I'm going to click Glow, a little plus there. Change quality to either medium or high. And I'm going to change the glow, uh, the blur radius here. Something you always need to make sure, <coughs> just realized uh, as I'm locking these, um, that it doesn't sit in the same way as it does underneath the rest part of the red. So if it looks, if the glow has gone back to this, uh, this mask icon here, just kind of drag it back this way until you can see it moves over to the left like this. So now I'm gonna click that first frame. We can kind of play around the glow. We can play around, play around the strength. Uh, so I don't want it too too strong. And I'm just gonna go up to this cog wheel and go copy all filters. And I'm just gonna select frame two and hold shift and select the rest of them. Go back to the cog wheel, paste filters. So if I play this now. We should have this nice kind of glowy, nice glowy fire effect. And that's it. Um, one other thing we can do as well. Uh, if I go back, if I unlock my fire gradient, um, which is just a big square. So we're masking off of the animation, but if I press V and just move the gradient up, so it just goes past the base of the fire animation itself, uh, that should alleviate the kind of wobble thing going on. So if I lock that again and just go back, um, we'd need to also add in this to the uh, the glow underneath because that's uh, the thing that's still there. Um, although we could actually just cover that up with a little rectangle. So I'm just gonna. Just get the same color there. This is a little bit of a, a cheeky, uh, a cheeky cover. But I'm just gonna just put that across everything. Just lock that. Just rename that cover so it covers up the nasty base. Uh, that's got a little black outline there. Just gonna make sure that is set over here to zero. So that kind of removes that outline. Lock it. And just make sure my V tool selected. And there we go. And this is our finished animation. And this is just, you know, one possibility of uh, how we can animate these. You can have a go yourself. Um, maybe tweet me on Twitter of your results if you want to kind of show if you uh, followed this along. Um, try out some different stuff. Try out the uh, the different rough things. So remember we did um, all these uh, things here. Try out different sizes, different things. And that is pretty much it from me today. Um, yeah. Let me know how you go on. Hopefully this was a, a fun tutorial to follow. This uh, video is sponsored by my patrons. Um, I've kind of merged my Patreon page, which is my video game animation study channel, and this one. So patrons fund both this channel and the, uh, the animation, the video game one. Um, though I don't really produce as often for the video game animation one. I produce uh, more regularly on here. Uh, so feel free to spot me there if you wish, but other than that, I'll, uh, I'll see you later. Thanks very much. Cheerio!